all right welcome back to kosi's arsenal podcast my name is kosi how are you guys doing good morning good afternoon good evening and even good night depending on the time zone in which you are this is the la- predicted lineup arsenal will be taking on aston villa over the weekend very decisive game I've, uh, uh, we have already gone through what Mikel Arteta said about this game in this press conference if you have not seen it check it out uh, it is on the channel link is in the description you can also uh, just click on it and it will take you straight to that video and see what uh, Mikel Arteta did say in his press conference um, yesterday but right now we're going to be doing, looking at the preview and uh, the predicted lineup who should start Devil Lewis red card is not going to be overruled according to uh, the FA they say it stands now this is where i agree with everyone who says football is becoming corrupt that's the truth there is no way that red card stands but according to the fa the red card stands and it's not going to be over time there are a couple of other stories that we shall talk about um i think in the next video Bukayo Saka nominated for goal of the season, uh, goal of the goal of the month in in in, in January. Uh, he he's also nominated for player of the month um, in January, as well as Mikel Arteta being nominated uh, for manager of the month in January. So there are so many things to talk about, but that will be um, in the Arsenal update. Right now, we are going to be looking at Aston Villa, Arsenal. Who is in the best form and who is fit to win this game? What does it mean? Uh, on the table you know it, it, it's really mad but I, sh- I, I think i should say this it's, it's, it's really really mad but aston villa ahead of us on the table with almost three games in hand and you know it really reduces our you know our morale going you know, uh, you know going into this game but again the same reason as to why we have to beat them um they have played 20 games and we have played 22 games um in this season they have 32 points and have we, we have 31 points um so that means they have two games in hand and they have a point ahead of us. So, you know, it really doesn't look so beautiful. They have 11 goal difference and we have five. So they have six positive goals. Um, even if we beat them, uh, you know, we shall have less, you know, a lesser uh, goal difference than they are. Um, and that's why when, when I'm predicting the predicted line, I'm going to predict a lineup that I think should go out there to get three points, not a point against Aston Villa at the villa park their form is not the best because they have played five games um in their last five games actually they have lost three times and won only two times so i think that that is a positive they lost to west ham as as far as i still remember and they robbed southampton in their last win uh before losing to southampton so i think they're not in their best form but trust me they have had a good run and they are really 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 fantastic this season arsenal on the other hand uh, we are a little bit, you know, our results in the f- last five games are not so good. Um, a loss, two draws, and two wins. Of course, if you ask me, you know, I, I know the, the run we have had. You know, most of you are going to tell me, because I thought we had won all the five last five games or we had lost one against Wolves. But, of course, we lost to Wolves in the midweek. We had a draw against Manchester United. Um, we managed to draw against Crystal Palace. So those are the two. Uh, those are the three games we actually uh, didn't win in our past five games. So what could the predicted lineup look like, and who is fit to play for Arsenal in that game? Is what we are going to be discussing right about now. Right, let's get straight into it. Um, the goalkeeping department, I think um, now uh, things are negotiable, right? Um, things are really, really negotiable because, you know, I, I used to say, you know, things are not negotiable in here when Leno was there. But Leno has a red card, three, uh, three games out because he has a straight red card. Then you look at um, Matt Ryan, is not fit. According to Mikel Arteta, he didn't train yesterday. Um, and today, I don't think he trained, so I think... We might go for Runason. Now, I know many Arsenal fans, this is, you know, this is so scary, isn't it? You know, going for Alexander Bruna Runason. But he is the only goalkeeper we have. And, and, and I've seen so many people say, you know, going in a game with Runason is, 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 is you know, it's like you've, you're going into a game 
with already two considered goals. But I think it's going to be on how we play defensive wise because we all know that you know the goalkeeper we have behind us is not going to be um, superb. It's not going to be you know self reliant, and that's why I still blame Leno for that stupid, ridiculous mistake. Uh, it, not even a mistake, but decision he made um, against Wolves. So Runason comes in goal um, ahead of uh, Leno and Matt Ryan, who are not. Uh, available for selection uh in the center back i think gabriel magales will come in because uh, like i told you um david louis is not going to play in this game the reason is very simple um his red card stands the red card he got against uh um i don't know why whenever i try to write in here right um here it goes so i i, I told you david louis won't play play you know won't be playing in that game so we have to use gabriel magales um as the left-sided center back of course i have no problems with him make no mistake he's one of my best defenders at arsenal i have no i, I really don't have any mis you know any problems with him um and he comes into the left uh, left side of the center back partnership with rob holding who i think has really 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 evolved up um evolved out very very well he's been that kind of player that i think arsenal can depend on right now um in the right back position hector bellerin uh will be in uh, because we do not have another right back cedric who who, uh, who is the backup right back will actually be playing um as the left back in this game so that is how we are bound to line up defensive wise against Dustin villa and i tell you what this is scary you're playing players like ole watkins grelish rossi Barkley, yeah uh, you know muhammad el, -El, -El ghazi these you know the attack of aston villa is that sharp at least they will i mean they almost score in every game they play that is how dangerous and deadly they are having bellerin cedric out of position and a shaky gabriel with a goalkeeper who is not a guarantee that can keep out five shots on goal this is going to be a hell of a game isn't it um thomas Partey comes into the midfield of course for me i think um this is another game he's going to have to be on his best on you know on top of his game and this time it's going to be a real test for for, for, for thomas Partey because you know he's battling three quality players who i think um you know right now are among the best players in the league joe mcginn in that midfield you know the energy you know the speed you know the positioning he has and you know the ability Joe McGinn you know, possesses for Aston Villa and what he means for Aston Villa in their midfield. Um, then you have Joe Grealish, um, who is very adventurous. You know, he moves like, you know, like, you know, a pastoralist on that pitch. In, you know, he's always in the midfield, on the left, on the right. He, you know, he is where he wants to be and he's very, very hard to track as a player. Um, and then you have, of course, Rossi Barkley, who I think is, you know... Chelsea just gave Aston Villa gold, a piece of gold, and, and they did know that they gave them pure gold. I thought I think they thought they were giving them, you know, a piece, you know, piece of shipper. I think the way, you know, Aston Villa look where they have, you know, Barkley and Joe McGinn in that midfield, they look stunning. L they look so beautiful. Um, it's a game where I want to in you know include Granit Jacker and Martin Odegaard um, as part of our midfield, not um I wouldn't actually add um, Emily Smith Rowe. I'm going to be putting Martin Odegaard as a starter in this one. And I'm going to be explaining my reasons why um, I think Odegaard should be playing for us instead of Emily Smith Rowe. Now, Partey and Granny Jaka can actually fight out Joe McGinn, Rossi Buckley, uh, and Jack Grealish in the midfield. I don't think it's a battle they are going to win, uh, but I think they will be occupied. You know, they will, they will be occupied in that sense. We, we, we might not see a lot of runs from Partey going forward. We might not see a lot of contribution from Granit Xhaka going forward. Like I told you, they have to maintain they have to maintain Grealish, Joe McGinn, and um, and and and, and Rossi Barkley. And that is, you know, that's a job you have to do 90 minutes. If you slip off, like we slept off against Wolves, it's an equalizer. It's it's it's, it's a goal, yeah. So you have to track those men. And I, I think I'm gonna applaud everybody who you know who saw this that. We shouldn't have considered that penalty if Grand Jack and Thomas Partey had overworked the midfield of, of, of Wolves. Actually, uh, they let their guard down. 
the ball transforms from the midfield to our defensive line where David Louis is out of position. He gets back and he clips the Wolves defender. So I think the reason I was why I want Martin Odega to be in this lineup is pretty simple and clear. He has the ability to drive that ball from the center line to the 18 yards box. He has the ability to feed the left winger, the right winger. He has the ability to hold that ball um, when we are, uh, as he waits for support. And he also has the ability to create chances and score goals. I think that is what is, you know, he is better um, than Emily Smith. Because for Smith Rowe, he's a very, very good player when, you know, when you have the ball, when you're in position. But he cannot control the game. So we, we might need someone who might, who, you know, who's able to control the game. And I think that could be Martin Odegaard. Uh, that's why I give him a priority in this game. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang is back. Um, and I think he's going to be playing as our left winger. Uh, there is no question about that. Uh, he cannot be dropped. Um, I think it's just going to be so sad for players like Pepe uh, and, 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 and Gabriel Martinelli. But I think Aubameyang will start. And then Alexander Lacazette will start um, in front of um, them as the striker ooh, ooh, and i think lacazette has not scored in the past three games but he has had very very wonderful um games as, as against united he should have scored yeah you know i mean he was denied by the woodwork um i guess wolves if he had not come off you don't know what you know could have come he had had a, you know he had made an assist but he was ruled offside inches offside pierre Mar Aubameyang comes back I, I don't know whether it should be a book you know a big boost uh, for us, no, really, I, I don't know whether it should be, but I think it is something that you know we can pride in, yeah, something that we can pride in. Abamyang is back, Lacazette and Saka, that is you know enough, but you know, to be very sure, just to, you know, just to be sure, I would say if Mikel Ateta can, he should be playing Pepe, Saka, and Alexander Lacazette. Pierre Merkel Abamyang doesn't look on form, he doesn't look this is not his season. Let, let us just agree. This is not his season. It's not our season as a club, of course. We are struggling um, game in, game out, struggling with referees, struggling with this and that. But I think Aubameyang shouldn't be starting for us. But I think that's the predict uh, predicted lineup. And of course, my prediction in this game um, is Aston Villa 2, Arsenal 1. I think we might need to win this game, but it's going to be a very hard one at the Villa Park. We have so many injuries. Kiantian is out. David Louis has been red carded. Um, Ban Leno is off, you know, is off. Abameyang is not on form. Um, I don't see our way beating Aston Villa. It could be 2-1 in favor of Aston Villa. And of course, don't say I'm, an, I'm, I'm not an Arsenal fan. It's my prediction. You can give me your prediction down in the comment box. And I'll be very, very glad to take it in.